Welcome to the Ball Not Court Podcast. Again. Cortez Paul is here with Kevin Carter and <laughs> Steve Van Order. We are having... <laughs> I didn't wave this time. We are having... I did. did, did we are dealing it. with a, a bad storm over here in Jacksonville and um, knocked us out on power and we started this over here. So yes, like Kevin said, this is take two and um, we missed take one. It was pretty funny, but you're going to hear take two again and we'll go and start it off. Uh, Kevin, how's... <laughs> Once again, how are you doing? I'm fine! <laughs> Steve? <laughs> I'm doing great, and I still hate Ohio. <laughs> Throw that out From there, 30 so. minutes ago. All right, so, <laughs> ladies, ladies and gentlemen, bear with us. We're, we're, uh, we're going to do our best here, and hopefully Mother Nature don't knock us out here. And, and uh, we'll, we'll, This is where we're going to talk about college football, because it does start tomorrow. And um, we're going to go ahead and break it down and... And you're going to hear from Kevin himself and Steve himself as well. And they uh-huh. to... oh, You're hearing from Steve on behalf of me and uh, me on good. behalf of Steve. There you go. Yeah. So, so we're giving each other's good. opinions backwards. Backwards. Yeah. So uh, these, these two guys that I know I want to consider that they know pretty – know a lot of stuff when it comes to college football. So uh, definitely pay attention to these two guys. When they, when they speak college football, these are the two guys I consider coming to when you're just in the house with me. That's why you gotta come to me. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So let's let's get right to it. We're gonna go ahead and break down the uh, preseason rankings again. <laughs> so, number one, you got Ohio State. Number two, you got TCU. I number forgot three, what Alabama. I even said last time. Four is Baylor. Five is Michigan State. Six is Auburn. Seven is Oregon. Eight is USC. Nine is Georgia. And ten is Florida State. You want to look through 11 to 25? Please go to ESPN.com. Do it yourself. All right, go to Google and Bing and look it up, and you can get the rest of the 25 or the rest of the 15 that is in the top 25. I do have a problem with the top 10, though. All right, go ahead. How the hell is Georgia ranked number nine? I just realized this. How the hell does Georgia rank number nine? They are using a transfer from Virginia at quarterback. You heard me correctly. A transfer from Virginia at quarterback. So well, this 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 is your 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 gripe about this right now is the uh, the Georgia being in the top. You gonna what? You're gonna run it? Oh, they got they got Nick Chubb. I don't give a crap. Nick, one guy does not make a whole football team. When your quarterback quarterback play not as gigantically as important in college football as it is in pro football. You can get away with shoddy quarterback play in college as long as you have a guy that's going to game man. You can get a game well, away with a game manager in college and still be a really good football team where you can't do that in pro ball unless you have a really good defense like Baltimore and them they had when Trent Dilfer was their quarterback. Yes, we had a Trent Dilfer mention on the show. <laughs> But Georgia is bringing in a guy who was horrible at Virginia to play quarterback for them now. I I don't think they should be ranked number nine. But, again, I don't think I'm with Steve from what we said earlier that you're not going to be able to hear. That I don't think they should do a top 25 until week four or five of the regular season. I, I, I don't think they should do it. But as far as Ohio State being ranked number one, it's fine. As far but. Like I said earlier, and there's my little nugget again, most of the top 10 teams, and if you look all throughout the 25, the thing they have in common is they're all trying to find new quarterbacks, and everybody's bringing in a new quarterback. So how is that going to equal out and stuff? It should make for a very good parity throughout college football this year. And that's what I said last time. All right, Steve, your thoughts on the the poll or the rankings and everything like that. Go ahead and spend on this, your point you had. Yeah, I mean, like we touched before, I, I mean, like I said earlier, I think Ohio, you got to vote them number one. And like I, for years, I've always believed, no matter how you end up um, losing a lot, even if you lose a lot of players, I still think you should be ranked number one. Um, the following year, because you're the defending champ, you should get that ranking. Uh, I mean, you really have to have a mass exodus to not get that ranking. Uh, but I think they got the majority of this right. And, now that Kevin brought up the Georgia, yeah, I kind of agree with him on this. I don't think Georgia should be in the top ten. I can see a couple of cats that should probably 
be in there. Uh, LSU, I think, should be in the top ten. I think they're going to be damn good this year, personally. But again, they uh, have they have quarterback issues too. They're they have they're trying to it's weird. They have quarterback issues every year. Yep. You know, from what I've seen, and doesn't and they seem to be consistent. And they got a, you know, so. and their running back is crazy good. They're oh, running yeah. back. They're running back right up there with Nick Chubb. He, he oh, this yeah. kid could Absolutely. run. This kid could run for two thousand yards if he wanted to. As a freshman, oh, yeah. he ran for a little over a thousand yards. And that was at a freshman, and that was on limited time that he That's played because he was hurt. Right? Yeah, Fournette. Yeah, he, yeah, he's hurt. He was hurt some of last year, so in limited time, he gained over a thousand and something yards. So he is oh, yeah. a beast. But they, their quarterback, their quarterback issues are in in their their quarterbacks issues are even worse than Georgia's. <laughs> because they just can't decide on who they want to play ball. They they just can't decide on because one guy's bad and one guy's worse. <laughs> so it's one of those things yeah. where do we go with the worst of the two or the bad of the two? Okay. So Kevin, I, earlier in the show you, you discussed about the playoffs and how it should be to eight teams. Expand on that a little bit more. Well, oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, we said it earlier that. They messed up completely. Yeah, they yeah. they messed up completely when they started it at four teams. Anyway, this should have been an eighteen thing because TCU and Baylor legit had a gripe to where they should have been included in those four teams, which I think they should have been included anyway. Mind you, mm-hmm. Ohio State got in; they made their run good for them. They took advantage of their spot. It, yeah, they took advantage of the yep. TCU spot. Yep, they took TCU it, got hosed. Yeah. Yep, they took advantage of the people letting them in. They took advantage of it, and they did. And what I they, think, and I think what it was is the fact that Big Ten now has their own championship game, and I think that's what vaulted them in because now the Big Twelve doesn't have that. Mm-hmm. They have an outright winner, so they play that extra game. So that's why I think Ohio got that spot. But clearly, if you when you watch that TCU game against Ole Miss, they absolutely just embarrassed them. Yeah, it, 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 they, they one or one of those teams got jipped. Baylor or TCU, they got jipped. No matter how you yeah. look at it, they got jipped because this is not an 18 league. You'd have brought eight teams in, three of them or, or four of them would have been out of the SEC, and that's what people were complaining about. Well, if we move it to eight teams, that this amount of teams from this one conference is going to be in. Well, tell other people to be good. Exactly, get better. Stop complaining yeah, about it. And start being good. Once you start being good, then you don't have to worry about it. What you would have got, you would have got. Ohio State would have been in. TCU would have been in. Baylor would have been in. Alabama would have been in. Michigan State would have been in. Auburn mm-hmm. would have been in. Mississippi State probably would have been in. Who am I missing? Because uh, then you got one more team that would have been in too from last year. At the end of the year. Oh, preseason. Go to the final week. That's the final week. Oh. Okay, so you would have had Alabama, Oregon, Florida State. There was the other team I meant. Yeah, Florida okay. State. Then you had Baylor, TCU, Mississippi State, and Michigan. Look, I got them all except Florida State. <laughs> oh, I left out Florida State. Shocker there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. So, all right. So, this is this. Uh, do y'all already have a dark dark horse that y'all thinking of that can get in this weekend here? They that is look ranked lower than. Cause I know y'all y'all say okay. Not but, really, cause I haven't paid I, I haven't paid a lot of attention to the top twenty five uh, right now because I like Steve talked about earlier. I don't give it credit until later on in the season. I I don't I don't have dark horses. Mind you, I think Arkansas coming out of the SEC is a big dark horse for me. Coming out of SC, they're coming out of the West, which is a really tough division. But I think they could be a they could be a very good arc, a uh, very good dark horse candidate. Another dark horse candidate that I have, and Steve's gonna love this, Michigan. I think with Harbaugh coming Aww. in, when, when I well I, if anybody knows me, they know I love Harbaugh. I, I love both of the Harbaugh brothers. They're 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 two of my favorite coaches in the game right now. I love both of them. complete opposites of each other. But I love both of them. And I think with the amount of talent that Michigan can bring in and Michigan has, they need somebody to light a fire under that talent. What better guy than Harbaugh who lit a fire under a whole bunch of people? So I think they could be a dark horse to make a run. Not saying that they'll make it to the national championship, make it into the playoff. But I think they'll be able to give people a lot of fits to where they'll make a little push 
in their division. Okay, Steve, who you, who you got some of your dark horses? Save Michigan. Uh, I got some Michigan talk for you later. So <laughs> I got you. Um, I think Oklahoma could be one. Um, I got a buddy of mine who's just a really just a bigger homer in Oklahoma than I am in Michigan. Uh, that knows that team inside and out, and uh, and he's pretty. He's been pretty consistent year in year out. And when I talk to him, it's just like he's pretty spot on every single year when he's telling me this. And uh, the only issue I have with Oklahoma is their defense. Uh, okay. When are they ever going to really play it very well and on a consistent basis? You know, because they're going to have to over take a Baylor in a TCU. You know, can they can they knock them off and get to that next level? back to where they probably should be. Um, and believe it or not, uh, Michigan State, even though they're ranked number five, nobody's talking about them. That's what I was saying. There's my door. Nobody's talking right about them. Nobody's talking about them. They're, they've got a lot of talent. Uh, they've got one of the better quarterbacks in college in Connor Cook. Uh, I don't I don't like those guys at all, but they got a very solid defense. They, yeah, they lost Pat Narduzzi. He's at Pitt now. But they got another, brought another in-house guy to take over that defensive coordinator spot. And uh, D'Antonio is a defensive-minded guy, so I don't think they're going to be a much of a drop-off. It's just nobody's really talking about. It. No one and ever talks about. I think if they could beat uh-huh. Ohio, then there, there's your team. Oh yeah. Yeah. No one, no one, no one ever talks about Michigan State. Ever. They're consistently. They've been consistently good for the past what three, four years. They've been. Consistent. Oh, that's about right. Yeah. That, about yeah, that. Yeah, they've been consistently good, but no one ever talks about them. But yet they always. But the reason no one ever talks about them is because they always seemingly lose that game that they shouldn't lose. Exactly. They always lose that game to where you're like, "Well, how do you lose in that one?" <laughs> and 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 oh. that and uh, and for good reason, bad reason, it doesn't matter. That's what a lot of people look at, and that's the reason people write off some of these guys because they look at them and go, "Well, you you always lose that game. You're just not supposed to lose." Or you lose that game to where everybody looks at you with a sideways puppy dog head. <laughs> and like USC at number eight. USC, we all know, is going to lose that game to UCLA or Oregon or somebody they yeah, shouldn't Stanford. lose to. Or Stanford. They're going to lose that game they shouldn't lose to somebody. It's the same thing with them. We all got. We all know those teams that are going to do it, and they do it consistently every year. Georgia, same way. Always use that game to Florida or South Carolina, somebody they're not supposed to lose to. Florida State's going to fall off, and I'm going to enjoy it. <laughs> Here is one big dark horse that I have. It's coming out of ACC. Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech, the most unconventional, conventional offense For out there. And they do it with such perfect timing, perfect everything, that they're one of those teams that I can see making that big, huge, gigantic put. Them along with Clemson. Clemson, though, again, that team that always loses that stupid game that they have no business losing. Clemson's one of those teams. But I think Georgia Tech can make a big-time a big time push in the ACC, and I wouldn't be surprised if they won the ACC this year. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, let's uh, go on and talk a little bit about Ohio State. And um, yeah. sorry, guys. Uh, as you see, the present I want I want I want to present it from y'all and, and kind of get get a feel for y'all how y'all think they might do uh, them repeating as champs again. Give me a percentage. Uh, what y'all think, Kevin? You go first. A percentage of Ohio State repeating as champs, thirty-six percent. Thirty-six percent. Okay. You, Steve. I'm hoping the whole state gets sucked into a big sinkhole and they can't repeat anything. Um, probably fifty, and they have a lot of talent. Um, a lot of talent coming back. Yeah, they do have a lot of talent, man. And I hate those guys with passion, but they got a ton of talent, man. They didn't lose much, and they're going to be good.